Man, this trip to Switzerland, <laughs> I see cool stuff everywhere. I feel like we need to have the camera going all day long. We're back here at the window manufacturer. This is actually their show, showroom, Holzbauer Bucher. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And check this out, this little gem right here is a mock-up, a little diagram of how houses in Switzerland are built. A couple different assemblies, but man, this is cool. Let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So I mentioned this uh, in another video, but this is sand for soundproofing. And then on top of that is an insulation board with an uh, heat tubing, radiant heating, and then flooring that goes on top of that. Their wall construction really varies here. A lot of kind of what I would call normal framing, but done differently than what we do in the US, where they've got an interior sheathing. Here's a, looks like a half inch OSB. All that's typically taped for air tightness. They're using a lot of SEGA tapes. And they're also doing an interior vapor barrier. Remember, this is a cold climate. We want to make sure that in the wintertime, vapor is not transferring through the wall to hit a cold condensing surface. So this would be the same for us in the, in the States, for anybody in the northern regions. And they've got some cavity insulation inside the framing. This framing's totally different, though. I mean, they've got giant wood. They, they certainly don't do advanced framing here. Every wood that I've seen here has been massive and thick and big. They love their wood, and it's all Swiss wood, too, which is kind of cool. And then they do a ton of exterior insulation. So this wood right here is the same as this. Here, I can touch it. This is a mineral, uh, pardon me, not a mineral. This is a wood fiber insulation that's on the outside of all their framing. So this, this board right here that looks like, I don't know, it almost looks like chipboard. It's a wood-based ins wood insulation. My assumption it has a lower R value than other types of insulation, but it's isolating the house from that cold from getting through. And then they've got a bunch of different styles of cavity insulation here. But this is also really interesting. Look at these beautiful, deep window sills, really deep, thick framing. And so the window's set back to protect the window. This window happens to be sort of a clad window, so the wood is here and the cladding's here. They also do an excellent job with making really airtight windows, of course, triple glazed as well. And look how they've layered this outside sill pan flashing. The sill pan comes up and underneath. The window right here with this weeps is going to weep on top of this piece, which is separate, which is going to weep on top of this which has a nice overhang from the building facade. This is gonna come out you know, somewhere around an inch, inch and a half. It's got a drip edge on it, so it's gonna drip down. It's got a leg on the side that's gonna come up and prevent that water from coming back into the assembly. And then this is, I'm assuming, kind of in preparation for a stucco looking finish here, but let's go up to the wood siding. When we get to this level, they've, they've transferred on the mock-up to a wood siding on the front. They do a rain screen back there. And look at this, where the sill meets, they've got this perforated kind of L bead right here to let air flow into there. So air can come in, come in here, it can dry out all that wood siding. So anytime you see wood siding, you knock on it, it's hollow behind there. Which means that that wood, when it gets wet, it can dry to the outside, it can dry to the inside. And any water that gets in there is going to always have a place to weep out. Look at this, where this wood meets this head right here. It's got an angle on there and it's got a drip edge too. So that water coming down is going to hit that drip edge. That's going to break the surface tension and let that water drip right out. It's not going to run back towards the window. And again, when we get to the roof assembly, same thing. Above the header, they've got that exterior insulation. It looks like two and a half, three inches of wood fiber insulation here. Again, here's that rain screen, so that air cavity right here. And then another insect screen that's going to let air in there. Love this roof assembly. This is a pretty similar roof assembly really to what I'm doing back in Austin, Texas, but this is a ventilated tile roof. Tile roofs are great roofs. They're going to last for generations uh, of time. This is a fired clay, it looks like, and they've got an air gap here, so they've got that up on stickers. And then you're going to see the roof membrane right here, which is going to protect the framing from water, but it's also going to be vapor permeable so we can dry through that. We're going to see that a lot in these cold climates, a vapor permeable roof membrane. And then they've got two types of insulation, right? They've got this cavity insulation here. What you can't see is this rafter. There's probably a two by or gosh, four by eight rafter that's in here. And then again, wood fiber insulation on top of that. And then the roof space. But the last thing I wanted to mention too is that 
interesting woods that they have on the interior of their houses. Look at this beautiful plywood that I'm seeing all over the place as a ceiling. This is some kind of fir, so you know, basically a, a pine type wood, but it's in a, a three-ply plywood. And they seem to eliminate the use of sheetrock or drywall uh, in a lot of places. So cool. Hey, let's go over here to this side of the mock-up. Let me show you one other um, fatter wall design. This looks like some type of advanced framing, maybe even double stud construction. I can't see what's going on there, but what you're noticing is the walls are super thick. I mean, this is probably a, I don't know, 16 inch wall assembly, tons of insulation. We've got wood fiber insulation on the inside. They also have an extra layer of mineral wool insulation on the inside on this mock-up. Again, more of that cell, oh, actually this is cellulose insulation here, blown cellulose here. They're always doing exterior insulation. That's the best place. It's going to break those thermal bridges. Man, these mock-ups are so cool. Before we leave the showroom, I'm going to show you one other cool thing. This company, Bucher, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, also mills wood that they are sending out to builders for different reasons on job sites. So check this out. This is a floor assembly meaning this would be a structural floor, similar to what we saw at that other job site. And look, they've milled into it kind of a bread design. This is for um, acoustic reasons. So the, the people, when they look up at this beautiful wood ceiling, they're going to see this design right here as you look up. And that's going to stop the sound from resonating through that all wood building. So that, that's what the people are going to see inside that house. And believe it or not, that is a floor framing assembly that's absolutely solid wood. That's what these are too, although these are really meant more for rafters. So think about this as your ceiling in your bedroom with a vaulted ceiling. Look how pretty that is. A little chamfered edge on those. And it's a double tongue and groove. I remodeled a house that was built in the 60s that uh, architect David Weber uh, back in Austin, Texas did with me. And we had huge glue lamp beams that were spaced about 16 feet apart. And the builder in the 1960s used this double lock tongue and groove, and it was such a beautiful ceiling. It looks like they're doing this still today and all the time here in Switzerland. Okay, a couple of things I want to show you real quick. Look at these beautiful profiles. My assumption is these are some of those other woods like we talked about with Jordan. These may be larch. These may be beech. These also could be some firs. My goodness, they have some pretty profiles. You know, in the States, we're always thinking about how to reduce our wood consumption and do, do with less when it comes to wood. And here in Switzerland, they're really, I mean, they're growing it here. It's a sustainable product. It's sequestering carbon. When the house is no longer uh, met its useful lifetime, it's going to be able to decay back to the earth. What's greener than that? And in the meantime, it's an incredibly healthy house. And it's certainly beautiful, that's for sure. God, these profiles, so cool. Guys, I'll put a link to this uh, manufacturer. I don't know if they ship out of the US, but I can tell you I've been thoroughly impressed. They build windows, they build houses in their factory, they're a wood supplier. What an interesting company. I wonder if my company could end up doing this in 30 or 50 years. This is an 80-year-old company, so I've got a little ways to go, but what a fun trip. Big thanks to Sega for sponsoring my trip. There'll be a link in the description to those guys. We've seen their products all over the place here in Europe, used for air tightness. What a cool company. I'm attending their air tightness conference, so stay tuned uh, for some details on that in some coming videos. And Jordan and I are also traveling on to Germany after this. Follow along on our trip on Instagram. I'll put a link to both Jordan and my Instagram feeds below. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.